Hello, and welcome back to Factorio. I am Dorthek, and this is episode 8 of our walkthrough tutorial Let's Play series for Factorio 0.17. In the last episode, we started to build our smelting arrays and lay out the design for our main bus. In between episodes, I completed this little section of array, and I beefed up our resources here on the west side a little bit. Uh, I doubled up some uh, of the ferrets, put them in uh, protective little forts, so that we can uh, better hold off the biters. As you can see, there's been a lot. I've also run some more belts, coal, iron, and copper, to start running these arrays. I have not, however, hooked them up, because we're going to do that together. So, the first thing we're going to do is connect coal. Now, as I mentioned before, these arrays, when they're fully set up, will eat a complete belt of ore, but they need far less coal. So you can share a single belt of coal between many arrays, which is what we're going to do. As you can see, some will go to provide this array, and some will skip to the next one. And that will start getting materials into our milk. So this first array we will use for iron, and we may change that later. The nice thing about these arrays is they're very easy to reconfigure. Cut the ore, let them drain out of materials, and then connect something else, just making sure you connect the output correctly. And as you can see, they're producing already. Now, of course, we're not going to be able to feed them a whole belt of iron ore right now. We're getting a full belt because it backed up, but if we look back where we're producing it, we're producing much less than a full belt. And half of that is going up to our old base. Which is fine, since our old base also needs to keep running for a while. But we're certainly not going to be producing a full belt. Over here I've brought out copper, and it's a little bit uh, tricky. There's a little bit of spaghetti going on, because I wanted to continue feeding our old base as well as feeding into the new one. And I wanted to avoid running it over patches of ore as much as possible. Now over here, you'll find that I can't go any further because this cliff is in there. Later on, we'll be able to get rid of the cliffs, but for now, we can just jump over them with, um, with undergrounds. So this will come in here and produce a little bit of copper. Let's uh, do the next thing. This is gates. It lets us... Uh, create gates that we can open in walls, uh, which is a nice thing once we have more walls built up. So, let's see what we have here. Here comes copper, we've got copper, we've got iron, we have some production. So the very first thing we need to build on this bus is the production of two vital intermediate resources. The first is iron gears, and the second is green circuit. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to put one on one side of the bus and one on the other. It doesn't really matter which is which, so let's put iron gears on this side. Now, because we have these cliffs, uh, I'm going to start it just a little bit, bit past here. If we look, iron gear wheels take two iron plates and produce one gear every iron gear wheel every half a second. So there's a couple of things going on here. These are fast, and these are also efficient. This is why we want to have them on the bus, because each iron gear takes the space of two iron plates. So we can compress two belts of iron into one belt of iron gears. What we're actually going to do is compress four belts of iron into two belts of iron gears, but not right away. That'll come later. However, we do want to plan for that. So, what we're going to do is this setup here. I placed a ghost of an assembler because it gives us exactly three spots in between. There's an output belt. There's an input belt. And we can shift right click on one machine and then shift left click on another machine to copy the recipe. Where we can see that what we need is two iron plates every half a second. Well, that's quite a lot of uh, iron. Our fast inserters 
will currently swing once per half a second, so they're delivering not quite enough, but we will later upgrade them. And this machine is not actually working at full speed, it's only crafting speed 0.75, so we'll probably be okay with a single blue insert. We really want to sh make sure we could place two, but we're going to save some resources. Our next resource is some more rail uh, railroad stuff. And then we're going to output to to our output belt. Now, again, there's many different ways to build this. This is how I tend to build it. Because it is a fairly efficient use of power poles and all that good stuff. Now, this here becomes what we call a tileable block. If we select it, we can go up here, and if we overlap the power poles so that they exactly match up, you can see the bl the, them turning blue means that they're matching up, we can place another chunk, and another chunk, and another chunk. Now, this would work fine, and we can save this as a tileable blueprint. The problem is this blueprint can take two belts of iron and output one belt of gears. What we want long term is to take four belts of iron and output two belts of gear. Now we can do it by simply adding a second one of these over here and let it uh, and just make it twice as wide and that's fine but it's not optimal. Oh we've got some gunfire over here. Looks like the biters from this side are starting to attack. Let's just make sure they have that we have ammo in here. And what I do is I just fill it. 200 is the most it'll take. And then control right click to have, have, have. Uh, I'm finding, uh, I find 25 magazines or so are okay for the moment. Hopefully we will catch things before we need more than that. And if we look at the map. I'm seeing an attack over here, which was also held off. We will need to go and refill those guns very soon. Uh, oil processing is the next thing we will research. We are a long way from using it, uh, but it is a critical uh, step further down the road. So, while this will work, it's not very compact. And there's nothing wrong with not being compact. The space is infinite in Factorio, but personally, I prefer a different design. So I am going to hit Control z several times to undo that, and I'm going to do a slightly different design. So we're going to delete this, And we're going to start designing this way. We want two output belts. Okay. These belts are going to be our two outputs, but we need to be able to put things onto them onto both sides. If we were just to put a machine here and a machine there with inserters, we would get one half of the belt here and one half of the belt there. That's not what we need. Let's do the next research. Uh, flammables uh, we don't really need, but uh, it opens up some other military technology that is very useful later on. So we're going to do something slightly different. And it's um, going to look kind of funny, but I will explain what we're doing. We're going to place two more belts here. Uh, let's see, sulfur, which we definitely will need soon. Or not soon, but once we get oil. And we put our machines there. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're now putting it on these outer belts. And that is true, but there's more tricks up our sleeve. So the first thing we're going to do is combine these belts. Okay, so now everything from this belt will get placed onto the right side of this belt, and then 
onto the right side of that belt. Everything from here will go on the left side of this belt, and then the left side of this belt. But by putting this here, we're going to mix the two belts. And I'm going to hook up this much of the base to show you how that works. Because this is a useful thing to see. So let's go down here. And we're going to say that these four, first four lanes are going to be our iron lanes for feeding the gear maker. Now obviously we can't even feed a single one of these lanes in full yet, but that's okay. Let's go over here. Where's our gear maker? There it is. Now, the way we take things off the belt, off the bus, is by using splitters. Because we... We need power. And this is why I wired up the whole array, even though we don't need the power poles down low, because we can use that to bring power down to the bus and then use it to power our other systems. So we will come off to here. Uh, we have a bit of cliff there, but that's right. So, as you can see, they're going onto the inside of this belt. Uh, let's remove this. Just to show. But now, they're mixing. And now we've got both sides. This is not very efficient, as it currently is, because we're really not utilizing the full benefit of these belts. But we will add more by adding more machines and doing a few more tricks. What's next? Explosives? Oh, that's a good uh, intermediate tech. We've been do things with that. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think we're going to move the power pulse because we can be more efficient by putting them over here. This will this utilizes just about the same number of power pulse for 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 assemblers, but it allows us to be a little bit more compact. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this just as a guide to ourselves. But here comes our trick. We're going to do this merge back in again. Yeah, I set this up incorrect. I forgot uh, that I need to give up some efficiency on the uh, power pole. So we're going to put these like that. And doesn't really matter there, but it's important on our output. Uh,
And no, we can use exactly the same number. And the reason we want to do this is that we're going to take these and feed them back in. The reason for that may not be obvious, but it actually significantly improves our throughput because the system is imperfect and if we don't do it this way it will it will not work quite right. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to set some priority splitters here. What we want on each of these uh, inserters, and you kind of have to think of them as if they were upside down since we're always paying attention from the direction of the flow, is we want to output to the left but input from the right. So we always want to drain these outer columns and, the, and feed them into the middle, and vice versa here, output to the right, input to the left. And we're going to, we can do the shift right click, shift left click to each one of these. And what that's going to do is that anything that comes here will get shoved into here first, and only overflow will come in here to fill. Moral, if we didn't have these um, splitters here, what we would get is two belts with all the gears on one side and two belts with all the gears on the other side. These middle splitters, though, mix them. And that is um, and that is very important because that's what gets us what we want. Now, this is a tileable unit. We can uh, make copies of it. We're not going to do that quite yet because I want to clean it up and build a few more. But for the moment, we have our output. We have some iron gears. Now, where we want to put them on the belt is is an important question. And what I'm thinking right now is that we are going to put them here on this belt. Now we don't actually need to run this belt out this way. We just need it out here. Now, what we need to do is start skipping because this will put us put it around this will let us get around our intervening belts and there's our two belts of iron gears Now, we also need just plain iron on our bus, so we're going to put a splitter here, and iron is going to go onto, these, onto this block. We want four belts of iron eventually. Of course, right now we're barely making one belt. And then this next section is going to be for copper. And again, we want four lanes of copper, but we're nowhere near able to do that. But, at the very least, we can get things onto our bus. Um, batteries, again, very useful, much later on. All right. Now, on the other side of our array, we want to build green circuits. And, again, there's many ways to build this, but for this particular exercise, I'm going to use an existing blueprint. Because it is a really good blueprint, and it's what I want to demonstrate. This is another blueprint that I got from Catherine of Sky, from KOS. So I will provide a link to it because it's definitely not my blueprint, but hers. So this is kind of a wide array, but that's okay. We want a wide array. I'm going to 
do shift click and the first thing we need to do is clear out these rocks okay so green circuits require copper cable and iron plate as we saw before in our belt and it's a 3 to 2 ratio so we need 3 copper cable assemblers for every 2 green circuit machines now what we want is 4 belts of green circuits okay this is our output belts right here again we're not going to be able to build all that right away but that's our goal so we are doing a little bit of future proofing here and to make four belts of green circuits we will eventually need four belts of iron and a whopping six belts of copper you remember i said we would need 10 belts for this and we in fact do. now again we're not going to need all of it right away because it is we're nowhere we're neither able to provide enough materials nor need this much produced right now so I'm going to fill this out and then I'm going to explain what's going on I'm just going to run this electrical line up right now, ignoring bus locations. We will eventually need to rearrange it so that we don't interfere with our bus. But for now, I just want to get power down. What's our next research? Accumulators. Again, we're a long way from there. but uh, What tends to happen, especially at this stage in Factorio, is the research happens much faster than we can really use the then we can really use it. Oh, and we need to... I'm just going to have to jump these for the moment. Alright, so let's take a look at what happens here. The, these belts will bring in copper. So the, these machines will just grab copper off this belt and uh, produce copper cable. This again is a tileable blueprint. We can make copies and paste more of them. So why do we have three belts of copper here? Well, eventually we're going to run out of this belt. When that happens, we will shift, the, we will shift this copper in and then this copper in and fill them into the array so that we can keep making this array longer and longer until we've used up all three belts. This section is a little more complicated. Here's our incoming iron, and again, we're only using this outer lane of iron. The inner one is there to be shifted in later on. And we're jumping over, but you can we can use the inserters to pull from the, uh, from the undergrounds themselves. So that gets us our iron for the assembly machine. The outputs, though, this is a different way to solve the how do we get both sides um, of the belt problem. So this one outputs onto this little belt, this one outputs onto this little belt, and then they come together and this curved belt gets filled. And then this splitter shifts it into this belt, this splitter rearranges it amongst these two belts. The same thing happens on the other side. So the, re the end result is that we will get up to four full belts out of this array. Again, not right now. So, we need to get it copper and iron, and I designated these lower, this lowest section for that. 
So this is going to be our copper. And we're only just going to hook up the one belt for the moment, because we, can, we can't even afford to feed uh, the one. So we need six lanes of copper, that'll be these six, and then we need four lanes of iron, which is going to be these four. So we're once again going to split off from here for the moment, and eventually each one of these lanes will have its own smelter. Array but we're a long way from that. And as you can see, we're getting copper in here. And these machines have produced copper cable, but of course we still need iron. And let's connect it and see how things work. Once it catches up to us. Meanwhile, we can pick up fluid wagons. And here we are. So as you can see, this machine is placing it over here, this machine is placing it here. This just kind of pushes it here since it can't output. And then these two spread it. And there's our four lanes of green circuits. We're going to put our green circuits... This is... On this belt right here, and in this spot. Oh, and we are out of undergrounds. I'll be right back and we'll grab some. Okay. And I'm back. While I went up to the uh, starter base, I also refilled some uh, turrets and beefed up some defenses, because we were starting to need that. Alright, and this is going to be our green circuit bus. And while we're filling, we're using all four lanes here, just because we're producing them, as you can see, we're not even close to four lanes. We're not even close to one lane. But that's alright. Uh, I think we're going to 
put down one more block of this. I'm not sure if we can quite sustain it yet, but uh, it's uh, worth doing. Uh, except we don't have enough uh, assembly machines. Well, we can fill that out later. So, we have gotten a very good start on our main bus. We have several of our most important items on here. We have a little bit of iron, a little bit of copper, a little bit of uh, iron gears, and a little bit of green circuits. And that um, will go a long way to getting us uh, up and running. So I declare this uh, this bus officially in use, and uh, we'll continue with this next time. We've accomplished uh, quite a bit, so why don't you go ahead and try one of these for yourself, and as always, don't forget to save.